thank you. Um, but also thanks for the conversation and uh, your whole uh, uh, conference today. So I'll ex explain a little bit uh, what we'll, you know, what we're in the midst of. So I'm a special envoy for international water affairs, but also we call it a Sherpa. Doesn't really matter. It's a diplomatic term for the 2023 uh, conference, and that means that I have the the honor on behalf of the Dutch government to lead the process towards this UN conference. I do this together with a colleague from Tajikistan, and I will explain why this is happening. Um, first, and, and you've been discussing this and also in the panel, eh? um, uh, we face many challenges, and to address that, we also fragment ourselves. It's almost human eh? is that we organize ourselves in little silos and then or bubbles, as we uh, also now understand, and then feel pretty comfortable, and then all of a sudden we understand that actually is very n uncomfortable, eh? because what we create is actually uh, more challenges because of that. Um, uh, and with water is even perhaps, I wouldn't say worse, because that is a negative term, but you know, it's pretty dynamic. Eh? Uh, water is everywhere, and on the Upside, eh, as uh, Ban Ki-moon, former Secretary General, always used to say, he said, "Water is life," and it, it came really from, you know, his, from his heart, eh, not only from understanding. And that is true. Eh? It's connected to everything. But try to organize everything. Eh? We had a panel that was trying to address everything, and you know, pff, it's almost impossible. Now at the UN, the United Nations, they understood that and said, that, "Well, we're not going to organize it at all." So if you want to pick up the phone and call the UN on water, nobody picks up the phone. Eh? Knowing that water is life, that is actually pretty disturbing. Eh? So uh, there is no UN entity that is responsible for water. And some of you might say that is not true. You have UN water, but UN water is not an entity. It's a meeting. So they called the meeting UN water. And the meeting itself is having everybody at the table because water is life, so you organize everybody. And so here we are again, you want to call, nobody picks up the phone. There's another reason for that, and that is that water doesn't really care about us in the sense that what we do. Eh? So your aquifer, your rivers, your streams, your lakes, our oceans and seas, they cut across every border humans make. Now put that in the context of the United Nations, that means that when you talk about water in the context of the UN, you talk about, you immediately touch upon sovereignty. Well, countries like the US, China, Turkey, Ethiopia, and so forth, uh, also in Europe, really don't like the UN touching upon their sovereignty, right? So let's not do water. Uh, then we still have UN water, and water is very much part of the conversation on climate, is very much part of the conversations on security. So it comes back in a lot of these conversations, but there's no owner. Then we have 17 sustainable development goals. If you lost me, tell me, eh? then I, you know, then I you know, try to do it in a different way. Eh? Then we have 17 sustainable development goals. And every sustainable development goal has more or less an owner, except for some, and we call them orphanage SDGs. <laughs> really? Yeah, really. Now, you feel sorry, yeah? It's like, where's the, <laughs> where's the institute that cares for them? Uh, oceans, the oceans SDG is also such a SDG. Now, to overcome this, eh? so long story, cut short, to make sure that water in its full breadth and width, not only wash, but water everything, eh? water climate, water health, water... I have to... Uh, this is a little bit how I work, I'm sorry, but I have to talk about water and health. Two years in the pandemic, right? Two years, a global campaign on wash. I think every global leader, including your mother, father, cousin, brother, has said, wash your hands. Right? What did we do? Nothing. Billions of people lack access to wash. Two years of campaign, nothing changed. Do we wake up? No. Eh? So even a pandemic doesn't change how we act. Eh? So 
That is why we sometimes need help. It uh, could be a crisis. Well, the pandemic was not enough a crisis for WASH. Uh, there's no ownership. So as a way to escape that, as a bypass, but also as an opportunity, we say, okay, we need everybody together on this issue. It is too important. It's too big. Uh, we have to do this. Um, we tried that once, 1977. There was the first UN Water Conference in Mar del Plata. Some of you might remember. I was 10 at the time. I definitely don't remember that conference. Uh, although I was already uh, a, a swimmer and a sailor and stuff like that, I really had no clue about the conference. But some of you might. Uh, but it took us 46 years to again say, in the context of the United Nations, we want to bring the world together on water. And there was a resolution. A resolution is like an agreement of all countries in the context of the United Nations, the General Assembly, which is like the parliament for the United Nations, that said in December 2020, we have to come together on water. It is too important. We have to do this. And they asked, or tasked, one letter, big difference, Tadikistan and the Netherlands to co-host the conference. Uh, voluntarily, uh, we, uh, uh, Tadikistan and the Netherlands both said that we are willing to do this. Now, why Tadikistan and the Netherlands? You need two countries, a global north and a global south. More or less not representing everybody, but at least having a voice from the, the, the two sides. Um, we volunteered, but also tested the waters. You know, do the Germans want this? Eh? Then forget it. Uh, or the Swedes, uh, but, um, or uh, the Finns, uh, the Hungarians, uh, Australians. Uh, but they were okay if the Netherlands would co-host. Tajikistan was always there. Tajikistan is the water champion in the context of the UN. Tajikistan led the first, the second, and now the third water action decade. Eh? They are water. So I was in Tajikistan before, but I was now in Tajikistan in the context of this working relationship. We brought our UN partners uh, six weeks ago. Uh, we did three days of workshops, regional workshops too, and we had a press conference after, and we had like a room full of people like here. In the Netherlands, if you do a press conference on the UN Water Conference, I think nobody would show up. Eh? So in Tajikistan, 50 people in the room. First question, after Sultan Rahim Zoda, who is my colleague Sherpa from uh, Tajikistan, and I explained what we were doing. First question from a journalist, and she said, Mr. Oving, a question for you. Fantastic narrative, totally understand the importance, and a no-brainer for us in this room that Tajikistan is the co-host. But I really have no clue why the Netherlands. So here you are in your water bubble. Eh? You think, what did she say? No clue about, okay, opportunity, now I can talk. Now, interestingly, Tajikistan is the source, providing 70% of all water in Central Asia. Uh, I think one of the biggest glacier complexes of the world, highest mountains, biggest dam, largest dam, highest dam, again, new. So they are the water source, and we are water sea. So from source to sea, we can tell the narrative. So we complete each other, literally, on many, many fronts, and also have a very strong partnership, plus ambition. Now, what do we want to do? If you organize a conference every 46 years, it better be good. <laughs> or don't, eh? just don't. Eh? Um, and that is what we said last year, uh, as the Netherlands and the year before, when we were prepping for the mo this modalities uh, resolution, as we, the Netherlands, and we said with also our political leadership, are we going for this or not? Yes. But then it has to be something of relevance. Otherwise, we can't have a talk shop. Not now, we are in the midst of the SDGs, the Paris Agreement is, ah, you know, you know, uh, if, every s if, if from every dollar once, one, uh, from every dollar only one cent goes to the right stuff, 
We have to almost change everything. So if you organize then a conference, it is like the massive responsibility. So we said, okay, we will try. And Tajikistan said, yes, we will try. We do this together. So we hold hands. And we say we want to make sure that the conference is a way, a mechanism, an opportunity, a catalyst, something where we can unite the world, public, private, mayors, ministers, uh, individuals, institutes, NGOs, academics, across finance, to come together and say, okay, across water and everything, water and health and climate and gender and youth and economics and urbanization and security and peace and biodiversity and you name it, you got it with water, across everything we have to be able to identify what is the gap, what can we do to bridge the gap, what are the coalitions that help us, to what do we need to organize? Governance, finance, capacity, projects, pipelines, programs, and across to make sure that we start to make not only progress in that context, but also see what the opportunity is of who does what and how can we bring it to scale so that 1% that we understand where we have parties on, that we can scale the 1% to 2, 4, 16 and a majority. That is what you want to see. So that means that now we're in the midst of the preparation. We have a little, we have like a week and a year uh, ahead of us where we want to collect from across the world, so also from you with this agenda, but you have to own the agenda. You can't put it on the mail eh, and then say, bye, Hank, success. No, if this is your agenda, you have to come with me. You can't throw an agenda into the fire and say, you know, it burns. Eh? You have to own it. So you have to be part of that agenda and that coalition moving forward and say, okay, this is what I think we can do together in this field of water. This is what I want to bring or we want to bring in a coalition to that conference. And then say we can use the conference as a platform and a mechanism to say, okay, how can this become 10, perhaps 100? How can we first implement and then replicate and scale? How can we use the conference as a huge megaphone, you know, for implementation and doing the right thing, not only once, but then a thousand times. So across the world, we have these stepping stone moments, like this summit today and next week in Senegal, the World Water Forum, and then we have a Asia Pacific Water Summit and a DRR conference in Indonesia and a Ocean Conference in Portugal and a Dushanbe Conference in Dushanbe, Tajikistan and a high level political forum and a Stockholm World Water and so forth. And you have your own little conversations and projects and pride climbs and so forth. From every part and place around the world, region and partnership, there are opportunities to do the right thing better and then bring it to scale and to this conference. And if we have that whole global family of initiatives and coalitions that own, eh, that stand behind what they commit, that we can bring to New York and then from New York back to the world, then perhaps in that water pact, as I said, he said we have to bring that together, let's, let's call it a pact, a global pact, not a pact as an institution, but to hold hands, to really feel and, and capture that and say, okay, this is what we can do, this is what we will do, this is not an empty promise, but really a pledge that we want to see through and then scale and replicate in the context of the commitments that we can make. And it means that the conference is only mid in the midst of a process where the prepping is now, the conference is next year, and then we have seven or more years for implementation, for learning, for validation, for evaluation, for scaling and replication following. That's a little bit what we're going to do.